Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Um, I hope you've had a good day so far. Please be aware of the fact that tomorrow, even though it's a public holiday, we will still be having uh, mathematics lessons, um, Grade 12 mathematics lessons and Grade 12 physical science lessons. So please be sure to join me for those lessons. Right, so yesterday we were doing trigonometry. Um, just a reminder for those of you that haven't done it already, the, I have a assessment that I've made live that is um, on the Turnable platform and basically it is an assessment to check your knowledge of circle geometry. Um, it's multiple choice. I prefer you to choose and not make it multiple guess because what happens is at the end I don't I get a graph and it doesn't tell me who did what it just gives me a graph of say six people got this answer right and nobody got this right answer right or whatever um, so that I can get an idea of what you guys might have missed on my lessons in the circle geometry and then what I can do is I can go and aim for that okay if all of you do very well in the test then obviously I'm not going to go back to the circle geometry but if some of you did or a lot of you did really badly in one or two of the questions and obviously I'll identify those questions and then I'll go through them with you. So let's carry on with trigonometry but I'm going to keep that question in live for today and I'm also going to leave it live for tomorrow since tomorrow is a public holiday and you might have more time to do it. Um, please make a plan. Right, let's get going. So trigonometry. Yesterday we spoke about the compound angle identities and we spoke about these four formulae that we were given. And if you remember, we derived three of these formulae from the one. Okay, we were given the one and we derived the other three from it. Okay, and then we practice some examples. Today we're moving on from that a little bit and we're moving on to double angle formulae. Now again, you need to be able to derive these. So I'm going to show you how to derive them from the compound angle formulae. And you need to learn this because it's one of the things they can ask you. And then we're going to show you how to use our compound formula and then double angle formula in some questions. So first of all, sine to A, do you agree that you could write that out as sine A plus A? And then using our rule that sine of A plus B is the same as sine A cos A, I mean cos B, sorry, plus sine B cos A. That's the rule we're using. We can write this out as sine A cos A plus cos A sine A. And obviously, since it's A plus A, these don't change to B's, right? So do you see that we really just have two of sine A cos A? Because it doesn't matter if this is sine A cos A or this is cos A sine A. It's the same thing. You just multiply them. So you end up with 2 times sine A cos A. And that is on your formula sheet that sine 2A is equal to 2 sine A cos A is on your formula sheet. So you don't need to learn it, but you do need to learn how to derive it. Okay. Similarly, cos 2A can be written as cos of a plus a. And then our rule is this, cos a plus a can, if we do cos of a plus b, the rule is it's cos a, cos b, you change the sign, becomes minus sine a, sine b, right? But of course now there are no b, so it's cos a, cos b, a minus sine A sine A. So that means it's cos A squared minus sine A squared. And what's important for you guys, if you don't already know this, is that we don't write cos A all squared. We write, it's the same thing as cos squared A. That there is the same thing. So just as uh, you don't write when you're writing X plus 2B, you don't write the number one there because it's just the way it's done in maths. You can write it, but it's not correct. Similarly, we don't draw our cos A squared like this. We write it as cos A all squared. Okay, right. So obviously then cos 2A is equal to cos squared A minus sine squared A. And again, that is given to you on your formula sheet. Right, the final thing we need to do is show that cos 2A can actually be written in two other ways as well. Um, so you need to know that because 
because there are optionals that you need to go for. So we know the cos squared a, cos squared a is cos squared a minus sine squared a. But the general rule is cos squared a equals, cos squared a plus sine squared a equals one. So we could either substitute for the cos squared a or we can substitute for the sine squared a. So if we substitute for the cos squared a, in other words, we take this and we go cos squared a is equal to one minus sine squared a, and then we substitute into that. Do you agree that we get one minus two sine squared a? Okay. Or we could also do, instead we could solve for the sine squared a, we could go sine squared a is equal to one minus cos squared a, and then we substitute that into this over here. So it becomes cos squared a minus cos squared, cos squared a minus one minus cos squared a, which becomes two cos squared a minus one. And those, all those three are actually on your formula sheet. Okay, they're all on your formula sheet. So there's no reason for you to have to study this, but you do need to show how to derive it, and that is important. Right, so let's do some examples. So they say prove that cos squared a times by one minus two, two sorry, one minus tan squared a is equal to cos two a. Okay, or alpha. So we know that cos two alpha can be either written as cos squared alpha minus sine squared alpha, or it can be written as two cos squared alpha minus one, or it can be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha, because we just proved it, but that is on your formula sheet. So because we've got those three options, I'm going to leave the right-hand side, and I'm just going to play with the left-hand side. Now, whenever you're doing a prove that, you never work with them together. Okay, You either work with the left-hand side or you work with the right-hand side. You never do them together. So let's do left-hand side. So what have we got? We've got cars squared alpha times by one minus tan squared alpha. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply out this bracket. Okay, so it's going to be cos squared alpha times by one is just cos squared alpha minus cos squared alpha tan squared alpha. Now, do you see that all the possibilities all have just causes and signs in them? None of them have got tans in them. So we need to convert this tan into something with signs and causes. But we know that tan of alpha is equal to sine alpha all over cos alpha. So therefore, we can say this is cos squared alpha minus cos squared alpha times by sine squared alpha over cos squared alpha. And look, they cancel. So you end up with cos squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. And look, that's one of the options. So we now know that that equals the right hand side. And there you go. Okay, so that was quite an easy example, agreed. The trick here, of course, is you could have go started with the right-hand side first, but you wouldn't know which one to go with. And then after you've got that far, there's nothing more to do. So we needed to work with the left-hand side. And then also grade 12, so don't be scared when you're doing these things and thinking, oh, well, I'm writing this down. I'm not seeing what I'm gonna end up with, so I can't do the sum. 90% of the sums that we get in the finals at the end of the year. The teachers haven't seen either. We have no idea, okay? We know our tricks, we know our rules, should I say? So what do we do? We just apply the rules and see how we go and see if we can get there, okay? So there are so many, there are, <laughs> there are only so many rules, but there are so many different questions that there's a very strong chance that the question that they've made up for the final we haven't seen either. So all we are doing is taking a baby step, just like you guys do, and working through it with the rules. So don't panic if when you start at this point here, you can't see the solution. Just take it one step at a time. Worst case scenario, you end up with something that doesn't work and you have to cross it out and start again, okay? But again, I'm going to say <laughs> something you really hate probably by now, practice.
okay? The more you practice, the better you're going to be at seeing the patterns. Right, let's look at another example. So now they say, oh, it looks horrible. Prove that 1 plus sine 2x over cos 2x is equal to cos x plus sine x over cos x minus sine x. Sure, okay. Now listen, let's just go through the rules. We know that sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. We also know that cos 2x can be one of three things. It can either be cos squared x minus sine squared x. It can be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And it can be 2 cos squared x minus 1. Okay. Right. So normally I would say to you that I wouldn't change the cos 2x into anything until I knew where I was going. and I'd always choose a sign, change the sine 2x into something because it's only got one option. But in this case, we've kind of got a hint. This has got a cos x and a sine x in it. And the only one of these three options that has a cos x and a sine x is this one. So I'm going to use that there. Okay, so I'm kind of tired of writing in red, so I'm going to move to blue. So I'm going to start with my left-hand side. Why? Because I can't think of any way that I could simplify this or do anything with it. But this does have a sine to x and this has got a cos to x. So let me play with the left-hand side and see if I can somehow make it look like the right-hand side. Okay, so do you agree that I can write this as 1 plus 2 sine x cos x, okay, all over. And like I just said, cos 2x, your options are cos squared x minus sine squared x, 1 minus 2 sine squared x, and 2 cos squared x minus 1. And the thing that we're aiming for has got a cos x and a sine x in it. So I'm going to therefore use this dude here. Okay, so I'm going to write it as cos squared x minus sine squared x. Okay, now I still don't know what to do with the top, so I'm going to write 1 plus 2 sine x cos x, but do you agree that the bottom is the difference of two squares, right? We've got cos x minus sine x, and we've got cos x plus sine x. Hmm. That's quite nice because do you see that's the same as that? So we have to do something to get rid of this cos x plus sine x. And there's a trick. And the trick is this, to realize that one of the identities is that cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. And if that's the case, I can replace this 1 over here with cos squared x plus sine squared x. Okay, now you might be thinking, why the heck would I want to do that? So let me just show you, and then you can see where it comes from. So if I write this as cos squared x plus sine squared x plus 2 sine x cos x, all over my two brackets, cos x minus sine x, cos x plus sine x. Do you see that we actually have at the top here, we've got a trinomial. We've got a cos squared, we've got a squared term, a squared term and a middle term. Okay, if I had written this like this, if I'd written this is x squared plus y squared plus 2xy, you guys would have been jumping up and down going trinomial, trinomial, trinomial. But now suddenly because it's cos squared x's and sine squared x's, you're not so sure about that. That there is a trinomial, okay? So we're now going to rearrange it so it looks like a pretty trinomial and then we're going to factorize it. So let's do that. So it doesn't matter which one you put first, but since this is a cos got first, I'm going to write the cos as a first. So I'm going to say, okay, equals cos squared x plus 2 cos x sine x. And no, it doesn't matter which order they come in, remember, because this is multiplication, plus sine squared x all over cos x minus sine x cos x plus sine x. Okay, 
Now, can we factorize this? So again, if I gave you x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, could you factorize it? I'm pretty sure you could. Do you agree that the factors are going to have to be x and y and x and y? Because the coefficient of x squared is 1 and the coefficient of y squared is 1. Okay, so therefore, it's obviously it has to be that. And this plus here tells me that both signs are the same and they're both positive. So therefore, we get x plus y, x plus y. But then our x is in the place of cos squared x, right? So cos x. So we could write this as cos x plus sine y. Oh, sorry, sine x. Hmm. Sorry. Sine x. And then cos x plus sine x again all over this denominator here, which is cos x minus sine x cos x plus sine x, right? And then yay, these cancel and oh my word, it's the right hand side. Okay, so sure. First off, we mess with the left hand side because it had these double angles. Second off, we needed to realize that that's the difference of some difference of two squares. Thirdly, we needed to realize that that's a trick, that cos squared x plus sine squared x or one, you substitute that in and then suddenly you have a trinomial that you can factorize. Okay, so this question is actually quite a nice question. It's kind of a level four question when it comes to grade 12. Um, trick. So it's a nice question. It's something I would include in my exams that I set, but I mean like that. So I would suggest that you make sure you can do this. And grade 12, again, I'd like to suggest that if you are watching these videos and you're struggling with these trick things, go and rewatch the video, but then maybe if you have an idea of what to do, and I don't mean an idea because you remembered what I've said. An idea is in the sense that you don't remember what I said, but you want to try it for yourself. Then stop the video right at the beginning when I say, at the, or pause it at the point where the new question comes up. Try it for yourself. And then if you get stuck or if you really don't know, or if you want to make sure that you got the answer right, then play the video again. And of course, if you download it, you can fast forward it. So it's not a problem. Okay. Right, let's try another one. It says prove that cos 2x is equal to 1 minus tan squared x over 1 plus tan squared x. Hmm, so let's write this down again and let's change color again. So we've got cos 2x is equal to, and it's got three options. It's either cos squared x minus sine squared x or it's 2 cos squared x minus 1 or it's 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, so we've got this and the cos 2x is going to be one of these three things. So I'm not going to bother with that. If I get one of those three things out from the right hand side, I'm happy. Let's play with the right hand side. Okay, so obviously we have to convert this tan. So tan of x equals sine x over cos x. Agreed? So, do you agree that I can rewrite this? I'm going to say right hand side. Can be rewritten as 1 minus sine squared x over cos squared x all over 1 plus sine squared x all over cos squared x. Okay, now that looks a bit messy, so I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite it over here. I'm going to write it 1 minus sine squared x over cos squared x and I'm going to divide it by brackets 1 plus sine squared x over cos squared x. All I've done is I've rearranged this into an old-fashioned division sum. Right, so if we want to divide anything we need a common denominator. So I'm choosing a common denominator of cos squared x here. Okay, so it becomes, remember this is implied over 1. So 1 goes into cos squared x and gives you cos squared x. Cos squared x times by the top 1 gives you cos squared x 
minus sine squared x divided by, same thing here, we're going to do a common denominator of cos squared x. There really isn't a reason for this bracket now because the divide by line shows you that the whole of this is one number. But if you guys struggle with it, feel free to put brackets in. It's not going to be wrong. So remember there's an implied one year. So one divided into cos squared x gives you cos squared x and you multiply up it gives you cos squared x again. So you got cos squared x plus sine squared x, right? Right, so what do you do when you divide? When you divide, you tip and times. So this becomes cos squared x minus sine squared x all over cos squared x times by cos squared x all over cos squared x plus sine squared x. And some of you might be shouting at me already and I'll, I'll be very happy if you are. We can cancel those. What is cos squared x plus sine squared x? That is equal to 1. Okay. Do you, so therefore, this whole thing is equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x, which is equal to cos 2x. And the reason I thought some of you might be shouting at me is because you might have realized already over here that that is equal to 1 and you didn't have to write it again. So there you go. Okay, so again, grade 12s. Again, when I start these things, I think, oh, they look terrible. Let me just take them baby steps. Let me write them out. Let me apply my algebra that I know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's all you have to do. Seriously, I hate the phrase, but it's honestly the truth. You need to use baby steps. Right, now let's try this one. Now, sine to x is a nice one because it's just going to be 2 sine x cos x. So that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for the left-hand side to equal 2 sine x cos x, okay? So let's play with this right-hand side. And again, we're going to use the fact that tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. Okay, so right-hand side. We've got 2 sine x over cos x all over 1 plus sine squared x over cos squared x. Hmm. Okay, so do you agree that the best thing to do again would be to break it up into its nice fractions like we did in the last question. So what we're going to do is we're going to write it as 2 sine x over cos x divided by big bracket 1 plus sine squared x over cos squared x. But we can't divide anything if it's got two terms. We need to bring this over one term. So we need to find a common denominator. And the common denominator is going to be cos squared x. So that becomes cos squared x plus sine squared x. And that is still the same. Okay, and here I can hear you shouting already that there equals 1. Okay, so therefore do you agree we got 2 sine x over cos x divided by 1 over cos squared x, which could be rewritten as 2 sine x over cos x times by cos squared x over 1. Because remember, when you divide, you need to tip and times. So you flip it over and you times it. This cancels with the squared and you're left with 2 sine x cos x which equals sine 2x, which equals the right-hand side. Yay! There we go. Okay, that's not too bad, hey? Not too bad. Okay, let's have a look. Now we're talking about two-dimensional trig problems. Okay, so the reason we're going on to two-dimensional trig problems is because often within the two-dimensional and three-dimensional trig problems, they ask us to use something or prove something which then applies your double angles or your compound angles. So let's have a look. 
Before we do that, though, we need to talk about the sign rule and the area rule and the cos rule. So the sign rule states this. The little a is for the side and the big A is for the angle. So the sign rule states that little a over the sine of the big angle A is equal to little b over the sine of the big angle B or little c over the sine of the big angle C or vice versa. In other words, if you flip the one, you can flip them all. Okay. Now, obviously, you don't necessarily use these all three together. You can use the A's with the B's or the B's with the C's or the A's with the C's. Okay. We don't use all three. We use a pair of them. Okay. Now, the other rule that you guys should know, and this we use when we've got two sides and an enclosed angle. When you've got two sides and an enclosed angle, we use the cos rule, which says that A squared this side squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos angle a. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos angle a. Or you could rearrange it to find the size of angle a. So you could say, and let me show you how they did it. We're solving now for cos of a. So what we've done is we've got a squared minus b squared minus c squared, okay, we've just taking this across, is equal to minus 2bc cos a. But now we want cos a by itself, so we divide both of these by minus 2bc. Okay, that's supposed to be a c. Okay, so then what happens is that when you divide it, it becomes a squared minus b squared minus c squared over minus 2bc is equal to cos a. But nobody likes the minus in the front. So what you do is you divide the whole thing by a minus. So then this becomes minus, that becomes plus, that becomes a plus, and that becomes a plus. So you end up with b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc is equal to cos a. But quite candidly, this is on your formula sheet, right? This is on your formula sheet. And I find a lot of my students mess up when they try and convert to this. So what I would suggest you do is that if you're solving for your a, you put all the numbers in first and then find the value of a because it's much easier to solve for an angle or anything once the numbers are in. Okay, so I wouldn't derive this unless they actually ask me to do it. Okay, and then finally, the area rule. Now, we know that area is equal to half base times height. Okay, but in trig, the rule is a half AB sine C. So that is a half AB sine of the enclosed angle is exactly the same principle as a half base times height, and that gives us the area. Okay, so those are three formula that you need, and they are on your formula sheets as well, so you don't actually have to learn them. Right, so now let's look at an example. TP is a tower. Okay, yes, T and P is a tower. It's foot P and the points Q and R, okay, Q and R, on the same horizontal plane. From Q, the angle of elevation is X, okay, and that's R. And angle PQR is 150 degrees, and angle QPR is Y, and the distance between P and R is A meters. And they say prove that TP, they want TP, whoopsie, they want TP to equal this horrible thing here. They want TP to equal this horrible thing here. Okay, before we talk about this horrible thing, let's just talk about angles of elevation and everything, what's going on. So basically, if I had to redraw it, here is your tower, okay, with its little turrets. Okay, and what's happening is that there is a dude over here standing at Q, and he's looking up at the tower, and that is the angle. The angle of elevation is the angle he's looking up at. 
there is another dude standing over here at R. Okay, here's another dude. And all they're saying is that that's the picture, right? This distance here between the tower and dude at R happens to be A. The distance between the base of the tower and the dude at, at Q is happens to be this distance here. That angle there is 150 degrees, but that's on the ground. Remember that that's the ground. So this is up, this is angle is here 90 degrees. So that's up and this is on the ground. So if you guys, if it's easier for you guys, you will come to shade this in a little bit so that it helps you realize that this is 2D and this bit here is on the ground, okay? And that bit up there is actually on the sky. Okay, so now let's go through it again and make sure we've got all the information. So we've got the same horizontal plane, we've got 150 degrees X, we've got Y. All right, now let's write it down. We'd have to prove required to prove that TP is equal to A tan X cos Y minus root 3 sine Y. Okay, so yes, Y. Yes, A, and here is X, okay? And they want TP. Now, the trick with these questions is to realize that we're moving from one triangle to another. We're moving from this triangle here that's got the TP into this triangle or vice versa, and we're doing it via this line here. This line, PQ, is our bridge between the two triangles, okay? PQ happens to be one side of this triangle, but it also happens to be one side of this triangle. So that means that we need to find the equation with PQ and then related to both of these triangles. So let's first look at this top triangle here. Okay, the top one. Do you agree we've got TP and we've got angle X and we want to relate it to PQ, but this is the adjacent side and this is the opposite side. So do you agree that if we're thinking about Sakatoa, we should be playing with tan because tan is opposite over adjacent. So we could say, okay, fine, tan of X is equal to the opposite side, which is TP over the adjacent side, which is PQ, right? Therefore, we can say that TP is equal to tan X well, actually, let's just write that in up nicer. Is equal to PQ tan X. Now, at this point, I get excited because I can see that I've already got my tan X there for my required to prove. Now, all I have to do is get PQ to equal all this other stuff. Okay, so now we're looking at the blue triangle that is on the ground, this triangle here. Okay, this one, yeah. So do you agree we've got 150 degrees, we've got a Y, and we've got two sides, and we've got cos's and y's over here. So we've got our options are either to use a cos rule, which is A squared equals B squared plus C squared, sorry, plus C squared minus 2BC cos A, or we can use a sine rule that says A over sine A, A over sine A, is equal to B over sine B. Now I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking, well, this is PQ, which we've got. This is angle 150 degrees. This is Y, but this is A. So that would mean that we'd have A, we'd have Y, We'd have 150, and you've got sine y. Okay, right. So what about if we played with this and say that this angle here is 180 degrees minus 150 degrees plus y, okay? Which is the same as saying that that is going to be 30 degrees minus y. That there, that angle is 30 degrees minus y. Why? Because 180 minus 150 is 30, and minus times the plus is a minus. So it's 30 degrees minus y. So now I could possibly play with the sine rule. So I could go PQ over the sine of 30 minus y. 
okay, is equal to um, a, little a, over sine of 150 degrees. Okay, so do you agree that PQ is equal to a sine of 30 degrees minus y over sine of 150 degrees? Okay, so do you agree I've got an A here? Definitely got an A. There is my A. So now we've got the A and we've got the tan X. We've got to somehow get this thing out there. And we have to do it with this bit here. Okay. So now I run out of space. Okay, I can do it here. I just want to do it in different colors so you can see what I'm talking about. Now we're going to play with this bit here. And we need to think compound angles. And we need to think the 60-30 triangle. Remember the 60-30 triangle? This is 60, this is 30, this is 2, 1, root 3. Why am I thinking that? Because I'm seeing a root 3 here and I'm thinking, hmm, I need to do something there. So let's talk about a compound angle. Do you agree that sine of A minus B is equal to sine a cos b minus sine b cos a, right? So I'm going to rewrite that. Sorry, I'm just irritated because I'm running out of space. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this bit here. I'm going to erase this bit because we now know that we got PQ tan X. We're happy with that. Okay, and we know that we use the sign rule to get this horrible looking thing here, which has got A in it. Okay, so now we need to mess with this bit. And unfortunately, it doesn't allow me to move things over. Okay, so we're going to write over here. So we're going to go, okay, fine. Sine of 30 minus Y can be written as sine of 30 degrees cos of y minus cos of 30 degrees sine of y, okay? Now, sine of 30 degrees is opposite. Remember, you've got so right? Sine of 30 degrees is opposite of our part new, so it's 1 over 2, so it's a half, cos y minus cos of 30 degrees is going to be adjacent of our part new, so it's root 3 over 2 sine y. Okay, right, so do you agree then I could take out a common factor of a half and I'm left with cos y minus root 3 sine y. Okay, so that's that dude there. Sine of 150 degrees is the same as sine of 180 minus 30 degrees. Okay. And that there is the same as sine 30 degrees. How do I get that? Because of cast diagram. All stations to Cape Town. Sine of 150 degrees is in the second quadrant, which means it's positive, so it becomes sine of 30. And sine of 30 is 1 over 2, so that is equal to a half. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise all this stuff at the top here so I can see what I'm doing. I'm sorry for Mr. Point and it irritates you. I just really need to do this sometime today. So let's just do this quickly. Okay, so now let's get to it. So we want to prove this thing here. Okay, so far we had, okay, we had that, I've erased it, it's very irritating. Okay, so we've got that PQ is equal to A, bracket sine of 30 degrees minus y all over sine of 150 degrees. But that becomes a 
times by a half cos y minus root 3 sine y all over sine of 150 degrees, which we said was sine 30, and sine 30 is a half. Okay, so do you agree those cancel? So we got that PQ is equal to A, A, cos y minus root 3 sine y. Okay, so there's your A and there's this bit here. But we'd also proven that tan of x, tan of x is equal to the opposite, which is TP over PQ. Therefore, TP is equal to PQ tan x. So therefore, we can say that TP, I'm going to write over here, is equal to PQ, which is this horrible thing over here, multiplied by tan x. So it's equal to A times by tan x times by that horrible bracket, cos y minus root 3 sine y. Sure. Okay, so that was a nice tricky question. I actually really like that question. Okay, and the reason I liked it so much was because you used the fact that you needed to know your Sokotoa, you needed to know your sine rule, you needed to know your compound angles, and you needed to know your special triangle. So that's actually a really nice question when it comes to trig. Okay, grade 12s, I'd really like to urge you to try this question for yourselves. Um, in other words, um, go through the video again until you get to the top of the first question again and then pause the video and try the question for yourself. Um, and then make sure you can do it. And I know it's a bit messy, but if you watch through it, you'll see how I've raised it and where I've come from and everything else. Um, and then finally, I'd really like to urge you, if you've got the time, please go do the geometry live assessment so I can see how you guys did. And if there, so I can see also if there's any sections that I really need to go over with you guys again. Right, okay, that's it for today. Have a wonderful day and please join me tomorrow. I am going to be here tomorrow, even though it's a public holiday. Um, I will have voted in in the morning and then I'm going to come and teach you guys in the afternoon. Have a great day.